uh, welcome to this afternoon's uh, presentation by the uh, Bee Farmer Apprenticeship Scheme. And we've got three of our Year 2 apprentices who are going to join me up on the stage here now <laughs> um, to talk to you uh, about the Apprenticeship Scheme um, and what, it, what its aims are, if you like, to uh, promote commercial beekeeping in the UK. And it was realised a few years back that there was a lack of uh, new blood coming into commercial beekeeping in the UK. Um, and uh, a lot of work was done in finding sponsors and uh, a framework which we could work to. And uh, Rouse have put up a lot of money to sponsor the education side of uh, the bee farming apprenticeship scheme. There's also uh, work with... Um, the livery companies who are sponsoring and giving the, the title to the, uh, the Diploma of Excellence in Bee Farming. Um, and these are some of our students doing the, the various activities uh, on the apprenticeship scheme. And uh, they, they do a whole range of activities. Um, and the scheme itself has been uh, devised uh, around the all year uh, aspects of beekeeping commercially. Um, and the students themselves spend most of their time, as they're going to explain to you, with host trainers. So for the majority of the year, they're with their host trainer. And twice a year, on average, they come to a uh, serialised uh, classroom situation in Surrey, where we, we go through uh, topics that they can't necessarily do in the field. So we look at things like microscopy, we do a lot of work on disease, anatomy and you can see the list on the board here. So they do a whole range of, of skills that they wouldn't necessarily be able to do actually in their work placement. And one of the problems that we have that nearly every single commercial beekeeping operation in the UK currently operates on a different system. So we've got people who are honey producers, we've got people who are equipment producers, people who are queen breeders, etc, etc. And by placing a an apprentice with just one establishment, they only one, one aspect of beekeeping. So the idea of the classroom-based training is to standardise the learning and give them a broad spectrum of knowledge. And they also have the opportunity to go to various other farms and actually have hands-on experience. But they learn the beekeeping skills, but the idea of the apprenticeship is to actually be able to set them up in business as well. And so we look at the business side of managing a business, so the, the financial aspects of it, you know, what do they need to do to run a, a successful business, the types of accounts and uh, paperwork they need to um, understand and complete. And obviously, uh, first aid, health and safety, and food hygiene. These are all parts and parcels of running a successful and uh, business, really, in beekeeping. And the, the, these sponsors here have been integral to the success of the schemes it stands at the moment. City and Guilds helped us write the format for the apprenticeship scheme, and so we're accredited with the, the City and Guilds. Cass Business School uh, were employed to study the, the scheme as it uh, was proposed to, to ensure that we were delivering a world-class apprenticeship. And they, the, the Cass Business School took our, our model of what we wanted to uh, achieve and went around the world and saying, were we meeting these targets? And the, the feedback came that we needed to make a couple of alterations, which we did to the programme, and now we're delivering a world-class scheme. So much so that, in fact, we've now had inquiries from uh, countries, other countries looking at what we are offering and seeing if there's some way they can adapt it to their, their country. So that's really good news. Um, and I've already mentioned Rouse, which is uh, hugely important to us. Um, and the uh, sheriff is sponsoring suit. So we've got a lot of sponsors coming into the business and helping fund these guys. So it's really good news. So what I thought I'd do now is I'd hand over to the apprentices and they can tell you their experience of where they are at the moment. So first up is Phoebe. Hello, thank you for coming and uh, seeing us all today. It really means a lot to um, sort of understand you guys uh, here and supporting us. And we receive so much support from um, the bee farmers themselves and all of our sponsors, as well as our friends and family. But it's so nice to see you all. My name's Phoebe. I'm, 
I'm 25 years of age, and which is sort of the, the upper remit of the, um, the apprenticeship scheme's intake, although I believe they're working to have, actually include more, peop more age um, groups uh, as time goes on. Uh, I'm 25, as I just mentioned, and I'm based in Staffordshire in the middle of the UK. Um, I work for a company called Beeworthy Hives that was established by my parents um, about eight years ago now. But my, uh, between them, my mum and my stepfather, sort of as pictured, have over 40 years of experience. And they've had a lot of input from a lot of um, amateur beekeepers and their local association, as well as a lot of uh, bee farming friends. And um, I'm sure any of you who are bee farmers or even beekeepers know that um, sort of you, what starts as sort of a little couple of hives in the bottom of the garden can soon become uh, sort of much more time consuming than your full time job and then you have to make a sort of decision well what are we going to do with all these bees and uh, I was uh, invited to join this scheme sort of by my mother because she was um, sort of just reading about it I think in Bee Farmer magazine and I was at a point in my life where I could have sort of um, I was looking for work in a in an industry that would actually enthuse me. And I actually studied um, sort of creative writing at, at university, but looking in the, the fields of work that I could get jobs in, I realized that it was more um, sort of selling things that people didn't necessarily want to people who didn't want them or couldn't afford them. And I couldn't really get behind it, you know? But um, with bee farming, I'm able to really enthuse about such fascinating creatures and uh, the, the whole sort of multifaceted industry really excites me. So I'm lucky enough to um, be able to try and learn more about it. As David touched on, we do quite a lot of um, sort of training on the job. I sort of average about 10 hours of training a week, which is just sort of discussions about different processes, different practices, and um, sort of a lot of history of beekeeping, which is absolutely fascinating. But uh, we get to get together and do some of the things we might not have access to, like um, microscopy. Um, I've, I really enjoyed the microscopy probably more than anything. It's uh, absolutely fascinating. Things like um, here on the left, there's an image of um, wing morphology that we've been uh, looking at how to uh, gauge the sort of genetic history of our own honeybees that might help us to alter the way that we keep them, um, etc. A lot of the um, work I do, I'm lucky enough to be able to work from home. We have a sort of like a honey house and uh, we have a home apiary, uh, but also my family, uh, we make bespoke hives to order. So we make all of our own equipment from um, uh, sustainably sourced Canadian cedar, and which is fascinating for me because I love, uh, you know, sort of getting stuck in and making the hives as well. It's something I didn't think I would enjoy as much as I do, but um, when you finally finish a, a piece, it really feels good we do queen rearing as well and it's having all these little sort of it's the being able to study the multifaceted craft which really keeps me enthused in beekeeping I find there's uh, me putting together hive stands so that's what I'll do on rainy days I'll you'll find me in the workshop when I'm not in the workshop obviously we're in the field and uh, because we keep sort of over well but at the minute, it, we have 78 colonies of honeybees. So obviously, we have multiple apiaries. We have to be managing the equipment and how we uh, sort of divide our time between uh, doing all the different processes. And the best thing about it for me is being outside all the time. Or not, not all the time, but, you know, being able to... Um, because I don't, I don't think you could pay me any amount of money to sit behind a desk these days. And, you know, I, I just... It, it's not... Um, not what I want to do. So it, I'm so lucky to be a bee farming apprentice. It feels like not my life sometimes, you know. Uh, a little about m my sponsors, aside from the sponsors of the course, I actually found myself a further sponsor in Freedom Brewery. They're a uh, craft brewery, actually they're between a microbrewery and a craft brewery. They're in that median unnamed category. But they make a range of sort of uh, lagers and ales and the idea behind their business model is that they want to be completely sustainable so they treat their wastewater through a series of reed beds um, which I've had a chance to learn more about which again fascinates me all that sort of thing and they are all sort of solar powered and planting trees and because I'm sponsored by them I get to attend some of these uh, sort of 
I, you, like they do tours, for example, and I get to learn as much as I sort of then have to stand there and go, oh yes, and the bee side, because I keep uh, honeybees on their land, and um, they've won quite some awards now um, as a result of having all these different um, methods of trying to be a, a sustainable business, which I think in today's uh, ever-changing climate is, uh, is a really important field of study that I feel very lucky to be a part of. Uh, another opportunity that was um, beyond my wildest dreams was being sent to New Zealand by the Bee Farmers Association themselves. They paid for my tickets and they sorted me, uh, they organised for me accommodation and work. Um, it was unpaid work, but obviously I was, you know, I mean, I, I would have, um, I did jump at the chance to go. And it was just absolutely incredible to see the ways in which really, really large-scale commercial honey farms, um, sort of working the manuka and um, that sort of thing. It was just, I can't put into words quite how much I learned from that experience. And, you know, it's, it's just a dream come true, really. So what am I going to be doing over the next few months? Obviously, it's winter, a bit of downtime. There's plenty of uh, maintenance to do. As, yes, as apprentices, we do get stuck into the... Uh, oh, you see those, uh, see those queen excluders? I don't want them to look like that when I get back. You know, there's plenty of the uh, sort of the, what, how you would imagine an apprenticeship to be, you know, and it, I think it's, that's the way it should be, really. So I think that sort of concludes uh, my portion of the presentation. Um, we'll all be taking questions at the end, but just quickly, I'd like to dedicate my portion of the presentation to my uh, beloved late friend and mentor, Mr. Lionel Pratt, who I, uh, I miss his, um, his sharp mind every day. So thank you. I'd like to hand over to uh, Sam now. Right, my name is Sam, as Phoebe politely said. I've been beekeeping since I was 12, and I beekeep in Thurrock, Essex. I started as a small hobby between me and my dad, where the first hive we had, we put on the porch of our door. So that's how we came up with the name Porch Honey. And in the three year period of growing from that, we spread out into two nature parks nearby, Walt Tyler Park and Langton Hills Country Park. And through that, we officially became a business two years ago. Profit. That's probably one of the most important aims and objectives for a business, because without the money you make as a revenue stream, you can't actually be there you can't actually succeed in anything. Awareness, with the awareness, we need to spread out our knowledge about beekeeping to people that don't actually know that much. Learning, the more we learn, the easier it is for us to deal with unprecedented situations, so that's also very important. The iceberg illusion is probably one of the most fascinating ideas that I've seen because an iceberg roughly has about 25% of its actual iceberg above sea and the rest is below and that really does show what people see about the business and what actually goes into it. The four main ones I really think are the best to explain about beekeeping is dedication which I think is another word for passion and that just goes around explaining how much joy you can get from achieving your goals. Sacrifice, it's unprecedented hours and situations, it's difficult you lose time for things that you might want to do in your own personal lives, but it's something to do with the business, so it's a sacrifice worth taking. Persistence. Everyone runs out of patience at some point, so that's where persistence comes in. And the worst one, and the obvious one in every business, is disappointment. Losing beehives, low honey crops, unprecedented hours, and even weather. Awareness. We have several different areas that we spread out our awareness and explain and try and teach others. Birds and the Bees at Barleylands, which is a children's event that they teach about the an animals, they teach about birds, they teach about plants, and we are lucky enough to be able to every once in a while teach them about bees. We do that through live feeds into the hives, we do that through audiences doing presentations in front of them, like I am now with you guys. And then there's also present, presenting at several primary schools we've gone to. And that's pretty much the same way we've done as birds and bees, except 
I'm usually on the other side of the screen, so I'm able to show them through the beehives, which is really, really fun. Um, farmers markets, we teach them, anyone that comes over and asks questions, we explain about our business, we explain about what we're trying to achieve, our ethical aspects, and what other people can do to help the beekeeping community and the actual bees in the world. Um, and then there's obviously the online social media way of Facebook and Twitter. We keep people that follow us up to date with what's going on in the hives and what we're doing as a business. These are our main sections of products. We have several or one or two for each. Not all of the ones that we're doing at the moment are actually out, but they're all ones we're really interested in going into and already are. Yeah, so honey. Our major one at the moment is a honey syrup, which we sell to coffee companies and to be, um, just to anyone at markets, which is really has a really strong flavor of cinnamon or vanilla which people really like putting in their coffee and hot drinks. And it comes out really well and people always like it. Meadow honey. So that's the basic one. Everyone knows about the normal honey. Beeswax. Wax candles. You can make several different scents, which lots of people like. Some people just like the basic scent of the beeswax, which we do those as well. Propolis. That's a new one we're working on. It's fish medicine. It show it helps against sores and ulcers. Yeah, ulcers um, for fish and seals them over. And it can also be used for an assortment of other medicines. And then there's bee venom, the one I'm most interested in. It can go into cosmetics, face creams, eye serums. That one I'm not really interested in because it sounds a bit scary. Um, but then there's also lab testing. It's been shown to fight against cancer isn't actually out there yet as a medicine, but it's being shown in labs to fight against it. And then there's the average medicines for arthritis. These are the types of hives I use, polystyrene hives. We get them from beehive supplies in Cornwall. These are the basic facts about it. Lasts 30 years, can be shown to be last longer, but that's around about how long that they've been out there, so they can't officially prove more than that. Easy to build, they're light, they come as a just a flat pack, put them together with a bit of glue, 10 minutes later, you got your hive. Very mobile, they're light. It's quite easy to move them, even with, a, um, with bees in them. You can easily put them into a van or a truck with just one or two people, depending on the person, of course. And then there's the most interesting bit, their property, which is called inversion. It keeps heat in during the winter, seriously reducing the energy output bees have to put in to keep in their place and be hive warm, and it keeps heat out during the summer, which is really good to stop the hive from having heat stroke. This, I think, is the most important at the moment because this is about the apprenticeship scheme. We get so much from the apprenticeship scheme, such as other people's perspectives, such as our fellow apprentices and our tutors. There's so much we can learn from them and each other, such as, obviously, I've been working with polystyrene, which isn't really out there, but there's the wooden ones, and I can learn through those as well, and just sows all the sorts of sides that we want to learn, not just the one we've concentrated on ourselves. Professional relationships. I am looking into, me and a fellow apprentice are both looking into the uses and the places we can buy properties from, so that will be very important for the future, as well as other people we meet through the apprenticeship scheme, such as at the event here. A recognised diploma in beekeeping. There aren't that many ways to show experience in beekeeping other, other than actual experience, so years, several years worth of experience. But this gives us an official document of experience. And then it actually comes to experience. <laughs> Sorry, I said that all wrong. But yes, yeah, so we get taught by so many people that have more experience than us, and we've got all of their experience at our fingertips. We can learn from them all the things that we know, they know better. They, they know more about it than we ever will, unless we get to their age, of course, in experience. <laughs> um, and at that point, I will head you over to Lara. Hello. Um, so I'll be talking just a teeny bit um, about my experience with the apprenticeship scheme and just a little bit about myself as well. 
So this is me, just really enjoying the job, aren't I? I love the job there in that picture. Um, so just a little bit about myself. I'm 25 years old. Um, I studied a degree in biomedical science, so I did slightly veer off the uh, beekeeping track there. Um, but I've sort of grown up around beekeeping in the, in the sort of it's been in the family for since I was um, eight years old. So I have sort of had a slight snippet of it, but it wasn't until the um, apprenticeship scheme that I really started to truly believe I could um, uh, do it as a as a full time career. So just a little bit about the bee business I work in. Um, I work with my family, so it's um, far. My father started the business in 1999. Um, started as a hobbyist with his um, sort of local association. Went to the classes, took my mother. Thought it'd be a lovely activity, lovely couple activity. Uh, and then you know, so many years down the line, we now run um, 900 beehives, um, and we are sort of um, commercial honey producers. So uh, it's, it was always a bonus for me and, and my brother that get to work in, um, in the company. Slightly less for my mother that literally has no unrelated bee trips now. It's, it's mostly, oh, you'll have a nice day out. We'll, we'll take you on a, a nice day out, uh, my mum. And then suddenly it's to Tradex or, or to the honey show or to something bee related. So, um, so yeah, that's, I'm lucky on that side. Um, the business we run uh, runs from, um, so we're based in Northamptonshire in Brackley. Um, and we run hives across uh, Buckinghamshire, um, some in Oxfordshire, all the way up to Worcestershire, um, where we do some of the pollination contracts for um, for cherries and, and some apple fields up there. So um, what I'm going to talk about mostly today is just how fantastic the apprenticeship scheme is and how much it can benefit people from, from all the backgrounds. So obviously I am lucky enough to go into a family business that um, that is already established and that is that's a real treat for me um, but obviously this is this is an education that gets everyone grounded at, at every level they come into and it's sometimes quite shocking when people know that I've, I've grown up around it how little some of us know about certain things so when they go Lara you, you should know this and I go yeah 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 I definitely do no idea absolutely no idea so that's um, always rewarding making sure that we all have that really solid grounding to sort of either progress businesses or to to create our own in the future. Uh, so this is um, some pictures of me um, doing something I really enjoy, which is a microscopy. Um, when we do our, we go down to our block releases, and this is something that obviously um, I wouldn't have the opportunity to do um, back at home because I, you know, the equipment and, and the time as well. So I'm not on my phone there just messing about. I promise, I promise I wasn't. Um, that's me taking um, a photo, as you can see, um, down the lens um, of, the, of the sting gland as we did a, a dissection there. So again, it's, it's a really fantastic way of covering the aspects of, of the learning. So it's not just, you know, telling you from a textbook this is what it's meant to be. It really sort of teaches everyone by sort of the dissections and really getting to see it, which is, I think, is key to, to a lot of people's learning there. And again, um, as David has covered at the start of the presentation, um, it, it covers so many aspects of friendship scheme, you know, and it really tries to make sure everyone's got all the questions and answer um, questions they want answered, so that they can run every aspect. So it's, you know, we get to to meet other apprentices that are, are specialised in other things, and um, and other businesses we get ideas from. You know, I I know that our company is is primarily. Um, honey production but there's there's a vast amount that I sort of want to do with wax and with propolis and, and other sides of it that the apprenticeship has sort of pushed me into thinking that's a, another side of the business that I would really sort of be interested in in taking further there. Okay um, so finally um, to, to sort of end my presentation I'm just going to talk about some of the opportunities um, that we, we get as, as part of the apprenticeship scheme. Um, so as Phoebe has mentioned in her last presentation um, she got the opportunity to go to New Zealand, that is fantastic. Um, but there is obviously a multitude of other opportunities for slightly more home birds like myself that didn't want to jet away to New Zealand at, at a flash. Um, <laughs> I thought, I can't do, I can't do 30 hours on a plane. Um, so just to start, um, we all sort of got the opportunity to be on the front cover of the Bee Farmers magazine. Um, and this was six o'clock in the morning doing um, a march on top of Millennium Bridge to raise awareness of the, of the apprenticeship scheme and, and the real need to get younger blood into the, into the community um, and into, into obviously the bee farming world. 
and obviously really annoyed some commuters at that time, really, really annoyed them. Um, this is a picture of me and Liz Trust, and, um, and she is the former sec Secretary of State for DEFRA, and I got the opportunity to go on top of the DEFRA building in London and, and have a look at their bees that um, another one of our apprentice, apprentices um, usually manages. So that was a fantastic opportunity. I got an amazing view of London on that one. And then finally, I got to do a TV, um, bit of TV work, um, as I am now. Um, and, uh, and I got to do an interview with um, Good Morning Britain for ITV. And that was, it was a, a really fun um, sort of afternoon um, in Surrey at our sort of block release where I got to talk about, as I am now, probably in a more succinct and, and better, slightly shut, shortened down version of, of, our, um, of our opportunity we get there. And uh, just to conclude sort of the talk here, um, I think we've all had such different sort of views and, and opinions of the apprenticeship scheme. And as you can see, just from our versions, we've, we've all had different things and different sides that we find really beneficial. Um, obviously, I'm very, very lucky, as are um, Phoebe and Sam, to go into a business with our family, and that's, that's fantastic. But it's not just that that the apprenticeship helps. I know that Seb, that's on our cohort, that couldn't be here today, because he's jet-setting in New Zealand, like everyone seems to be at the moment. Um, he's, um, he's gone over to New Zealand, and he worked um, not at all with bees um, before he started the apprenticeship scheme. And now he's got that sort of real drive to set up his own business and, and keep bees himself, so it isn't just um, family members. Um, but uh, it's really beneficial for everyone. So I'll end there, and I'll, I'll leave David to sum it up, or any questions, any questions. that uh, anyone wants to ask? So I think hopefully you've all seen that the, the apprenticeship has lots of different angles, different uh, approaches to the scheme. Um, and as Lars just said, yeah, we've got some students who are family from families in beekeeping already, and we've got other students who are uh, totally coming into it afresh. Um, and hopefully they all have something to gain from it. One of the things that we have as a, a holding back of, of the scheme is uh, the availability of host trainers. Because the, these apprentices need to work on bee farms for three years as part of their apprenticeship. And it's actually finding host trainers who can take uh, a student on for three years is, is holding the scheme back in some ways. So for anybody out there who's got, is a bee farmer and has lots of hives and uh, can afford to uh, employ a student, we would be very interested in hearing from you. <laughs> so on that point, any, any questions? I'm curious, there was a lot of you in that photograph uh, on, on the Millennium Bridge. So how, <laughs> how, how many of you have come through the scheme so far? And, uh, where where, where so are we, you all in your different stages? Okay, so we're in the third intake this year. 2016 was the third intake. Um, they weren't all bee farmers on the Millennium Bridge. They thought I was a model. I was like, <laughs> oh, thanks, I'll the back. So <laughs> Uh, so the publicity company uh, hired in uh, uh, 99 extras. Um, no, that's not quite true. It was about 90 extras. Yeah, it was a lot. Um, we had to get on a tube all together. It was traumatic. They were like, oh, so all of us, just, just with our big smokers and our big hive tools, just go powering through the tube and just sit on there. And you're thinking, we're going to get taken down here. Like, <laughs> we are going to be in some serious trouble. But yeah, it was a very strange but fun experience. So the... So uh, cohort A, uh, the first intake are now this, their final year there. In fact, we've actually got one apprentice finishing in this month, and the others, they stagger their start time, so the, the last one finishes in June next year. Um, and we have a waiting list of probably around 200 applicants for 2017. Um, currently, we are receiving something like two inquiries a day for people wanting to come onto the scheme. So, that's great. <laughs> Hello, very interesting. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Um, um, presentation, so well done to Ooh, you. Relax now, we can, <laughs> we can calm down. <laughs> so nerve wracking to present. Um, I was just wondering if there was any opportunity to associate the programme with some of the education institutions and so be able to 
perhaps leverage more formal funding um, to grow the programme? Um, I think that's a possibility. Um, and I'd definitely be interested in speaking to you afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, 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 we are to some extent governed by the fact that we are sponsored by, we have sponsorships for certain aspects of the work. Um, one, of the, the, one of the big holdbacks, if you like, is um, wages. And, and so that's why Phoebe here managed to ar arrange sponsorship for some of her wage element. Um, s some of the other apprentices are being paid directly through the business of the, through their parents. But we, ha we have students who are coming in who are being paid purely by the bee farmer business. Um, and, and as I say, you know, it, the, the business model has to be viable for them to be able to employ people. And, and a lot of, as you're all probably aware, you know, the, the, the bee farm businesses wind down to some extent in the winter months. And that's why we're able to send the apprentices to the Southern Hemisphere where they can work in the, uh, the, the industry so they're getting all year round training. Yeah. But the, the, we're always looking for ways in which we can fund parts of the course. I have a fact, uh, a few questions. But um, first of all, uh, something about uh, education. Um, it's a story about honeybees. Uh, but there are or uh, there are other bees, uh, the solitary bees, the wild bees. And for uh, pollination, it's not, it's not only the honeybee important, but also the solitary bees, the, the wild bees. Um, special in uh, glass houses and oceans, um, there are not only the honeybees important, but also the other bees. Um, is there an education about this? Does, uh, uh, does it go uh, uh, alone about uh, uh, the honeybees and not the other bees of the other type of honeybees, the apis dorsata of the apis? If I could, um, if you'd allow me to answer that one, um, the way that our, our curriculum works is that each uh, sort of element of, um, of bee farming is split into quite concise modules and within each module we are given um, sort of criteria that we have to meet, for example, um, explain the, like one, one off the top of my head that I've been doing recently is, um, begins with, explain the role of pollinators within uh, sort of uh, within uh, the, their native environment. So for some of us, you know, I mean, personally, I think it's super fascinating. So I'm just going to write reams and reams and do as much research as I possibly can. Whereas another another apprentice might think, well, I'm never going to think about bumblebees, so I'm going to write something else. You know, it's um, each part of the curriculum, I feel, is very accessible and we can really sort of you know, really rip as much as we want out of it. So um, I, I agree with your point that other bees, not just honeybees, are absolutely vital to, um, to agriculture, for one. But I think we are encouraged and invited to explore um, sort of, you know, entomology and, you know, insect ecology just as much as we are invited to, um, to explore um, very many other. Um, yeah, I think it's important to remember we're talking about bee farming, not amateur beekeeping. And bee farmers, I've done a lot of pollination in the past, and um, I work obviously with honeybees, but the big growers now um, have changed enormously. And what most people who have very little knowledge of agriculture don't realize, um, the guys here have seen it, um, for instance, I'm on a small orchard which only has 11,000 trees. That's a small orchard today. Um, have bees, my bees on there, but they've also got bee hotels in there as well mm -hmm. for the solitary bees, and they've got bumblebee nests as well. Um, it's not um, something which is standing on alone. It's working combination. I've done a lot of po tunnel pollination in the past, 
and there um, um, bumblebees are used um, but heavily. The so it's, it's not a standalone. Um, but uh, the point I want to make, we're talking about a world which um, is very different to what the average amateur beekeeper understands. Uh, and, and agriculture is. has changed and it's big business. Germany, you've still got lots of small farms. Here, we go for large commercial, especially in top fruit growing and soft fruit growing. It's, you know, if we look back 15, 20 years, this picture was entirely different. It has changed enormously. And that's why, well, I met you before, I know, but um, I'm very impressed with the um, apprentice scheme because you're moving into modern yeah. bee, uh, well, bee farming and not the way it once was. Yeah, it's definitely changing even through um, the sort of 15 years my, my dad's done it because now the, the demand for, for honeybees on pollination sites has gone up absolutely tremendously. Every year we get asked to do more and more on the, on the Worcestershire side and there's sites where we have you know 100 bee, beehives on there for the season um, and then there's the sort of potential of, of having another hundred on another site. So it's the, the dynamics changing very differently from a lot of the, the commercial, especially the cherry farmers that I, you know, that I'm in contact with when we do our pollination, have changed massively over from the bumblebee side, um, even cutting down some of the mason bees um, and going to more, towards more of the honeybees now. And that's that's in the last few years, it, it, the dynamic has, has massively changed. And I think that's what will be a, a massive change in, in the pollination contracts that happen now and, and the need for more and more hives and more and more people in it. So it's, it's very important for that sort of aspect of um, the business because there's so much potential in it, you know. Um, so, yeah, definitely on that side. Okay, I ask my question. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've taken up the point that we just made about the shortage of um, places where you can gain experience. And this worries me a bit. And something when all those years ago when I was at Kirkheim, I saw a lot of the various German apprenticeship schemes. And they had a rule that um, six-year apprenticeship, quite long, you could never do it with your own family. You had to go somewhere mm. else. And they preferred at least yeah. 100 kilometers yeah. away. Um, yeah. Now, we have a lot of big boys. I won't mention any names in case anybody's here. Um, <laughs> Have you had an opportunity of at least spending a week yeah. with them? You know? it, it, it's, it, the, what I think is, is fantastic about the apprenticeship team um, for me is obviously I sort of never thought I'd go down the sort of bee farmer route. I, I, you know, I, I went and got a degree and spent lots of money getting a degree thinking I don't want to work with my father. Um, but the apprenticeship scheme, <laughs> no, I don't want to win. Um, the apprenticeship scheme opens up so many contacts for everyone. and. And every one of us has invited um, each other to each other's farms, and and I know that sort of just recently, um, my sort of my me and my father's um, company ran an, an open day for the bee farmers, and we had, well, I think about a quarter of the membership, including a lot of the apprentices, came and saw the setup that we have, and um, and I've been you know and I will do when I get the five minutes, um, the opportunity to visit other people's farms and. And, I, and the, it's so open that if you said, you know, I really want to visit a farm in Germany, you know, I really, I really have that passion. The Bee Farmers Association is, is so willing to, to really try and, and get you any contacts. And, and if we ever show any interest in a certain aspect, they go, right, we'll get you the contacts in Germany, we'll get you the contacts in, you know, and it's, and it's fantastic. So it's just getting all the opportunities you can. And I, I know I've been offered many many times to visit other people's and I have done on on certain occasions and we're quite lucky to have quite another bee farm only about half an hour away from us so we, we usually mix up there don't we yeah we do and I could I just say that cohort a the first year apprentices who are as you say coming to an end uh, I think every single one of them has spent time on another bee farm and the reason that we encourage it is because as I said right at the very start, each bee farm has its own way of working, its own model. So we've got some that are very much into retail marketing. And so we've got apprentices who are at the, out in the field working the hives, and they don't experience the marketing side of the business. And so they've spent, in some cases, two or three months in a, in another, with another business experiencing 
that aspect of the market. Because we're trying to get these apprentices all round knowledge so they can diversify away from the family business or, in fact, improve the family business with another dimension. I've spent uh, a lifetime in an industry that uh, has apprentice uh, schemes, so I understand it, but I also know that most people don't understand the difference between an apprentice scheme and a training course. So would you like to say a few words of how the nuts and bolts of a, an apprentice scheme? <laughs> so so the, the apprenticeship scheme is very much based on hands-on practical experience. So they're actually using the tools that are out there working the industry. And there are core elements which they need to do uh, to achieve a standard and uh, there is a framework which we work to and so they know uh, what they're aiming towards and they are monitored, they, they, they send in submissions to their assessors on a, a regular basis or should be a regular basis um, and the assessors uh, are marking their work um, and this work is both experience in the field and uh, classroom based or, or, or knowledge learned through books and, and research. They work to some extent at their own speed. They have three years in which to achieve the, the knowledge and there are certain aspects of the trade which they can't pass straight off. They have to revisit it over a number of occasions so we know that they've got the full feel for that particular topic. Is that not right? Absolutely. So you, you, they Can't will... Can't do it like last minute. <laughs> no, there's no way they can do it last minute. So there's no swatting up at the last minute to pass. And, and it's very much uh, a practical base course. So if I could jump in, one, one of my favourite uh, um, aspects... Say... <laughs> oh, OK. Yeah, go on, Phoebe. <laughs> Just Sorry. quickly, was um, that we, uh, we use a piece of software that um, obviously as apprentices we have to work a lot in the field, but you have to be constantly proving what you do. I can't just say I've done X, Y and Z this week. I have to be constantly proving what I've been doing. And this software allows us to interact, to, you know, to upload everything and really keep detailed journals. But then Celia can access, well, I mean Celia's my assessor, our assessors can access it from the other side and then say, that's great, I think you need to revisit this, or I didn't quite understand that. And it's being able to bounce things back and forwards that I think it really gives it that... Um, that in-depth, um, you know, it, it really feels like something I can stick my teeth into in perhaps a way that a course that is prescribed to you that you then receive a grade at the end perhaps wouldn't have the same feel, if you see what I mean. Following what Bob was saying, using a very old-fashioned term, you will finish your apprenticeship and you will become journeyman, or I suppose I ought to say journeyman people, <laughs> <laughs> bee farmers. Um, what I wanted to ask... You know, you're involved in your family firms. Not all apprentices will be involved with a family firm. When they finish their apprenticeship, um, where do you see them going? Working for one of the larger people or being able to set up their own business? And how, would they, or how are they going to go about that? I think the answer to that question is not an easy one to answer. And it's something that we are uh, exploring. I think both options are available, Terry. I mean, there we are looking at ways of uh, arranging funding on favourable terms for people wanting to start up their own businesses, um, and that's part of the the business model which we we, we work with them on. Uh, but in the main, short term, I would see most of them starting or going in with another business, or indeed um, several businesses. They would they would be employable by a number of different businesses at different times of the year. And that's another area we're looking at, because it, they, have, they will have a huge knowledge base which employers can exploit, <laughs> if that's the right word. Yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> um, to answer both your question and the question before, both of which ha are linked by one specific thing, the difference between the apprenticeship scheme and the basic training courses that are done is through this we get to experience everything, not just what one person teaches or several person teaches us in all the aspects. We get to do things such as I said in my presentation, this event, where we get to actually get links into the community, into other communities and to other businesses. And with that answers your question for links into the future. Some of us might go and work for them. 
or we might just have more ways of producing products and selling those products to others and buying for our own uses. Thank you very much indeed.